Okay, so this is Celia. Say hello. 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 Okay, so obviously in the interest of time, I've pre-cut some of Celia's hair. It's very, very thick hair, so I've not made it easy for myself. So what we're going to do, we're working with a sort of an undercut. So I'm starting with using vertical graduation, keeping it quite flat and fitted to the head. So I'm taking very fine sections because the hair is extremely thick. And pulling it straight back to really keep it flat, flat graduation, as we call it. And building up a certain amount of weight behind the ear, which I will be rounding off a bit later. Mm -hmm. So, do you have a sort of, um, you know, how far in advance, Colin, do you, do you plan? Your, your work because I always find I guess with more classic work it's pretty much it is what it is isn't it you don't yeah. you know exactly kind of where you're going with creative work even even though there's probably more sectioning off uh, with it there's also a certain amount and, and so you need to decide exactly where you're sectioning this away don't you but there's, there's a certain amount of freedom there there is a, a, there is but for me, I kind of run through it yeah. in my head. It's a bit like, you ever heard the story of the skiers, the speed skiers, and they close their eyes, right. and they're doing the slalom, and they've got the stopwatch, and they imagine the run all the way down, and they click to see what time they do. Okay. And for me, it's a bit like that. Like, I go through it in my head, which way I'm going to hold my fingers, what I want to achieve. I don't, I don't do it on a whim. If you remember, yeah. I really, really think yeah. about it before I start. Yeah. yeah. So... And you know, you've really got to take into account, you know, what the hair type is like. And mm. there's a lot of hair here. Mm. Yeah. You can hear my scissors Working through. getting through. But I'm going to keep repeating this until I've got behind the ear, and then I'm going to start on the side. So, and so it looks very, very. Uh, Technical, what you're doing, Colin, very clean, very precise, very um, methodical. You say that's how you work? You well, that's work. that's the mahogany way, isn't it, mm -hmm. really? I mean, that's what we drill into our mm -hmm. trainees, you know, it's precision, keep it clean, look like you're in control, you know, don't be jumping around too much, mm -hmm. um, which is very much the you know, mahogany philosophy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is my last section. Here behind the ear. Right, so as I said, whoops, as I said, th this is um, that's a bit too much weight behind the ear at the moment. If I come around this way. Is that right there, Ollie? It's perfect. Okay. Water spray. Right. right, so I'm going to start inside the hairline. So I'm going to leave a disconnected sort of sideburn which we're going to play with a bit later. So, I'm going to hold the hair, lifting it, because I don't want any weight line. Okay, and then just drop it down. And then just take the sections right through. And again, nice and fine. looking for my previous section every single time. Over direction or no? No, 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 I'm not, because I'm flattening it out, Neil, so I'm, I'm lifting it straight out. There's no build-up of yeah. weight or... So, I think I might need a section. For... Okay, so... Again, lifting. 
and then as I come through now behind the ear, so what I don't want to do is I don't want to round it off too much because I like this little this little bob line I put in here. Mm. So I want to maintain that. So I've just got to be a little bit careful how much I round it off. So just keeping that there. Right, so again, it's a bit repetitive. So now, can you see I'm just rounding my fingers off? Okay, so, so I want to maintain that length there, but I'm just going to be working around this way. It's quite a nice way to work, I find, isn't it? It's quite nice to be that sort of fluid, follow the head shape through. Yeah, it's great when you have a model like Celia who's really up for a big change. Yeah. Um, Celia's sort of sent me a load of pictures of who, who was the model again? It was uh, Stella Tennant. Stella Tennant, yeah. and lots of she's got some very very cool haircuts going on. Yes. Yeah, so it's going to have a sort of Stella Tennant vibe. I mean, one could say Celia, you have a Stella Tennant to batch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. So, if anybody uh, watching this, if you have any questions about the technique or about anything else. Um, Fire them in, and we'll do our best to, uh, to answer. Not many questions, but nice comments. Figmar on Instagram, such beautiful and clear form, Colin. A few little waves here and there as well, so thanks for tuning in. Nice. Oh. Right, and again, lifting each section, because we're really trying to flatten this out here, yeah? With the density of hair, Cindy has got. If I was to, if I was to start building up weight now and you know, pulling the head down to my previous, I think it would look too bulbous. Mm. Yeah. I think when you're doing an undercut, the underneath it needs to be narrow and fitted to the head to give it more of a contemporary feel. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like if you're doing an undercut on a, a, a client who's just got thick hair, you don't necessarily have to flatten it down too much, you're just removing a bit more weight for her. But I think when you're doing something a bit more contemporary, it is important to get the underneath quite flat and fitted. Mm. Right, can you see that? So my fingers are just pointing that way. So we've just had a high Colin from Dawn in Scotland, Dawn McNeil. Okay, hi Dawn. Yes. That's nice. And Anna so hypnotic. <laughs> Very nice. They're not falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> right. Stay with us. Okay, so there we go. But I think going back to the reference, the, the um, influence of Stella Tennant, that's a very cool, that's a, a good reference. That. And I think that's what, what's quite cool, Colin, is, is leaving those kind of whiskers out in yeah. front. So it's almost like it could yeah. be that kind of like slightly rock and roll, yeah. slightly boyish. Yeah, which 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 um, she did a lot of in the shots, didn't she? Yeah. So this here is obviously too long at the moment, but I'm, I'm going to dry it once I finish this panel. I'm going to dry the underneath and then have a little play with it. Mm. Like a bit there. Actually. I think that's the thing as well with creative work, isn't it? You kind of better leaving it on for the minute. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really not a problem to go back yeah. on something. A bit too much there. So, I think we're nearly done. Okay, again, elevated. Okay. 
Vigmar has just commented, we need such lessons, but is it possible in Russia? <laughs> well, it absolutely is. Uh, I've been over to Russia a couple of times. Um, great audiences there. So, yeah, um, you know, we would hope so. Invite us back one day. Right, so that's so far what we've got. So let me just dry that, which is the boring bit to watch. So, so why, are you you why, why are you drying it now, Colin? So you cut both sides the same, have you? I've cut both pretty much the same, well, I hope so, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then basically I want to refine all the outline. I've already done this side. But to refine it, you need it dry. You can't, you, you can't refine a refined detail on wet hair. You need to see how the hair can sit. Yeah. So, going back on, I mean, something that we talk about quite a lot in these events, but, you know, key to us, going back to what we've been talking about with Colin, is, is, is technique, strength in technique, um, and our belief very strongly that without the building blocks of technique, that you have to have that really strong foundation for your technical work and a strong understanding of technique. You can't move beyond that. So to, to, to move into anything creative, you have to have that foundation of understanding. Literally going back to form and function. You know, uh, building weight, flattening weight, moving weight, texture, or understanding that, that, that technical process. So it's important what Colin was talking about earlier, and you know we take that very seriously with our own training. Um, I myself look after the cutting and the training uh, for the company, and um, um, it's a very, very uh, uh, regimental but kind of like structured training. We won't let anybody move too quickly, at the same time we won't hold them back. So you've got to just kind of continue to in, 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 entice and uh, show you uh, exciting reaches to the training, but at the same time don't throw them in so that they're losing confidence and feeling, you know, out of depth. So it, it's that that we do. So we structure our training that we will take, we get people cutting and following hair really quite quickly. Uh, like literally within two weeks, they're cutting and following. But we start it on one leg lines, on understanding how to cut a perfect line, long hair into shoulder hair. Then we're going to work into um, long layers, understanding that form of what layering hair is. And from there, moving them into shorter layered bobs. Again, understanding that, kind of creating the outline, creating a line and then working internally with technique. And once the layering has been sort of mastered, that kind of longer length of layering. Um, all the while, the, the colour taught by Tara with me is, is going alongside, alongside uh, semi permanent highlighting, rego tint, tint application. We take them through that process, and, and that, that's going to take them to about 18 months in, where at that point they're going to choose whether they want to go down the colour road or the cutting road. Because in Mahogany, we still specialise in, in either or. Reason being, in our belief of perfection of technique, um, to become a master of one or the other. Um, from there, if they choose colour, we're going to take them back in and heighten the levels of highlights and tint process. Do you want to talk about it? No, no, no. Right. Um, and more complex colour on colour technique, highlighting tint. Um, 
from the cutting point of view, we've taken them to layering. After that then, if they choose to cut hair, we're going to start to take them into graduation, into men's work, horizontal, vertical, um, round graduation. Sorry, Neil. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. For... Okay, so I'm now going to refine round the ear. Now, something that's really important is what you don't want to get is what we call the mudguard effect. So when you're refining, don't go in with your scissors and just go cut, okay? Just point, so, and you'll, when I say mudguard effect, I don't want to see skin from above the ear to the hair, if that makes sense. So you keep the hair literally just onto the ear. Now I think it can be really crude if you've got this, this, this sort of gap here. So, so again, it's just pointing, just taking your time. Okay, so now I'm going to pick this up because this is too long. I'm just going to have a little look just to see what we've got here. So just take a tiny bit off. We've had a lovely comment off Becky Haynes. So lovely watching you, Colin. Colin, you and Neil trained me 32 years ago at Little Clarendon Street. <laughs> I had the best training and amazing career in hairdressing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Becky, for giving our ages away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was six when I trained up. <laughs> but yeah, so back into the training thing. Um, that's basically where we go to working through from a cutting point of view to. Um, Graduation and amendments, then moving into right, sorry, yeah, work. Right, just interrupt okay. myself. Right, okay, so I'm going to lay this top down here now. Now, what I've done is I've separated, I don't know if you can see that, but the, it goes from here up, back down, up, back down, and up. The reason for that is I don't want, because this is going to be laid down quite short and textured. But I, I still don't want an obvious line of disconnection. So by sort of doing a little zigzag parting, it kind of hides that obvious section. So, right, so I'm going to start back here. Um, water spray. <coughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a horizontal section right, So there's the previously cut hair So I want it disconnected But not masses disconnection So if you have a little look, can you see that disconnection there from the underneath? I thought I was fainting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now take an each section and back and over directing. I'm not coming right back to the previous, but I am 
I am moving across the head, but lifting up. Have a little look at this section here. Can you see that's just starting to drop over the over the underneath? They're not masses, but that's what I want. So Colin, this haircut is kind of slightly reminiscent of a collection we did called Civilians. That's which, correct. Which was sort of embracing that um, the civilians were a group of artisans um, hanging out in Savile Row, socialising in Savile Row in the Victorian period and uh, quite notorious for their party. And they sort of like, they crossed over into this slightly gentlemanly craft uh, imagery on, on women too. Um, we've just shot our latest collection. Do you want to? For the audience out there, how does Mahogany go about, what's the process of, uh, what's, what's, it, what's a calendar year in, in Mahogany, you know, when do we shoot and when, well, we, when does the concept get put together? We get together quite early in the year um, and everyone, all the team, the art team, they all come along with a mood board and suggestions, pictures, poetry, it can be literally anything. Um, sorry, did that just yeah. drop And then basically, uh, it's kind of, I suppose, my job is to try and sort of then take the best bits of everything and come up with some sort of concept. When I say my job, it's like lots of discussion with the whole team. You know, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? Some things just get, that sounds rubbish, and some things like that sounds very interesting. But this year's collection, it came together quite quickly, didn't it, Neil? We were sort of, me and Neil went to the pub to have a creative meeting mm -hmm. and um, you know we sat with everyone's mood board and um, it was you know we sort of, something sort of started evolving yeah know? so book your tickets for Salon International October this year it can happen like that can't it and I think what happened was we were just sat there and which I think quite often happens. It sort of it sort of spirals, doesn't it? Sort of the ball starts rolling and it gets you know it gains momentum and you kind of just taking ideas and sounding off and um, before you know it, you kind of want a concept. And I think the point being as well, I guess if it's if it excites us, then we would hope it would excite. Right, so I don't know whether that's clearer there, Ollie, the section where that's been seconded off. Okay. Do you know what, Neil? I'm going to let that down now anyway. Really? Right. <laughs> yeah. So there's a, a little zigzag section there. Now this now, I think what I'm going to do is dry the hair and then sort of visually blend this section in when the hair is dry. Because it is a really, it is big disconnection here. I think you need to see it dry to get the right perspective. So that's what I'm going to do now. Mm. All right, so. Well, again, because I want to cut it dry, yeah. I don't think you have to do it smooth, but I think because I want to do the, you know, texturise the hair dry, yeah. I definitely will need it smooth. 
I mean, I mean, she does have a lovely way in yeah. her hair. If you have a look at that, I mean, you could literally just put some product in that and just leave that. That would look really cool. But I need to straighten it today. I think that's kind of the main bandwidth, but it's not, you know what I mean? So 
Lots of waves, lots of highs. A nice event to do for these, these live events because, um, you know, it, it's nice for us to kind of like hear those comments and people saying hi, that being the same time ago. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Okay, so when we iron hair, we tend to just slightly curve the iron. We don't do this, you know, because then I think the hair can sometimes look lifeless and almost look like a wig. So in you go, just a general turn. So. Again, you don't need to squeeze them you know, really tightly together. I can't think of anything else to say about army hair that makes it no, so exciting. Really, no, it's <laughs> it again a process, isn't it? <laughs> So oh, Becky's back. I remember holding sections for hours. That's how you learn by watching. This is a great comment. Thank you. I hope, okay. our, I hope our present day assistants are listening to that. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so it sits better because obviously you've got that little jump in there, so it sits better going that way. So that's, I think, where we're going to go. Yeah, that's right. So, so, right, so if I just turn to see the side here, so this is the panel that we haven't cut yet. So there's the length. And the zigzag section that you took through there, Colin, I'm presuming that will, where you took the hair down shorter, will just create a sort of... It will just blend seamlessly. Yeah. yeah. You know, again, I think when you're working when you're working with disconnection, it can look so wrong mm. if you don't get the balance right, mm. if you don't get the sectioning right, it can just look crude. Mm. So it's really important to think about, you know, how to make it work best. Kelly Hedges, stunning. Great comment. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, Thank Kelly. you. Nice to hear. And I think, as well, when I'm cutting the hair color, I think that sometimes it all kind of, you know, obviously it's about the very strong foundation and the technique and the build of the shape and the the structure of the shape and working very technically clean but I always find that the last few minutes it really comes together when I kind of get in there and, do you know what I mean and that, that structure of the shape is there but then I start to refine and visual, visualise it and finish it which is where you're going to go to now yeah so now we're going to do the pointing so okay so we're going quite deep and again when we texturise hair it is in a very sort of controlled manner. You don't see the crazy jumping around, texturizing. And we do everything with a pair of scissors. We don't use thinning scissors, we don't use razors. Which, you know, I don't have a problem with them, but we, we just don't use them. So you've got to really know how to texturize with a pair of scissors. Now, once I've just gone through that first panel there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a clip in there just to make sure that when I get into this section, I'm not going to cut this hair again. Stuart Morris, Colin, that's looking as funky as your dash haircut, always ahead of the game. Wow, the dash haircut. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you. The dash haircut was done back in the day, and it was the first time we ever filmed us doing hair as such, and it was on a video, VHS video, but sadly no longer available. Maria on Facebook, beautiful, thumbs up. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. So again, Colin, even though you're working visually now, it, there's still a technique to it? Absolutely. That's well, that's why you've got to click, make sure, you know, to keep this, you know, this has been cut mm. once, it doesn't need to be cut a second time. Mm. So you've got to keep technique. You know. Now what should happen at the moment, there should, you know, the next section will probably be some very long pieces from that disconnected panel at the front. So. And when 
you were talking to Celia and you were throwing these ideas about. Do you go into what she does with her hair colouring? Do you, do, you, do you discuss that? Uh, well, Celia basically line? is very much like, doesn't really like colour, and I think it tends to go with her natural, um, you know, her natural mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, but, like in the Stella Tennant look, it says everything, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. So you just know really how far you can go. Yeah. We've got a, a comment on Facebook. Hey, as a big fan of yours, why did you stop producing educational books? Do you want me to answer that one? Are you, yeah, we yeah. both can. That, um, that's from Sigal David Rahamin. Sorry, okay, David, so, if I said you don't. Thanks for the question. Thank you, good question. The markup price, it basically, they're very expensive to to do a book, but the profit that you make from selling a book, you, out, you outlay a lot of money to produce a book, but the profit you get per book you sell is literally a couple of quid. It, 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 it's, it's financially just not viable. And I think as well, I mean, it's very unusual to find somebody who wants a book because Basically, people want you know to watch stuff on YouTube and and how can people access our work, Colin? Well, we we have a streaming website, so if you go onto the Mahogany website. Sorry, just going back to this. This is obviously the the very long bit at the front. So I'm going to just keep it long at the moment. Yeah, now we have a like a a streaming website on the Mahogany. A, a streaming function on our website and you can basically download the classics or you can download uh, past collections and there's some, there's some really good stuff on there and it's very very it's like three quid for a for a to download a haircut for a week and the colour you can do both so Looks great. Beautiful. So you're chucking the hair out and you're moving it. You're yeah, I'm just having a place. Yeah. yeah. Seeing which way. Yeah. Just pass me your hands, please, Neil. The gals said thank you. Yeah, I think um, obviously if you go to uh, the collections, it's, it's a visual, it's a, it's a technique with, you know, with, with a music overlay. Um, if you go to the classics, it's almost a modern book. You know, they're, they're sort of very broken down with the technique, they clean shot. So Donny McNeil on Instagram, stunning, Colin, you're a legend. Thank you, Dom. This is very good for my ear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop reading them out. <laughs> right, there we go. So, so you stand up and see you. Looks fabulous, Colin. Beautiful. Right, is that a good shot or further in here? Okay, so just a very quick recap. Have we gone all along? Okay, so starting off horizontal sections, try, really trying to get that fitted in the nape. Uh, then went to vertical once I got above the occipital bone and really, as you can see from the side, flattening that out yeah, to get that, accentuating that crown. 
and then obviously carved in this little curved shape through here. Then undercut the underneath, working around, taking some of the corner off, disconnected the top, and yeah, there you go. Looks fabulous. Very beautiful, Colin. Very, Thank very you. beautiful. Very beautiful to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed this evening's live with Mahogany. Um, it's been a pleasure being here. Uh, I think he's coming a bit now. You want me to get off out? <laughs> <laughs>